Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how Client Engager has completely changed the way that I run my practice. So I'm going to do a little bit of a day in the life type idea and give you some real life examples of how I'm using Client Engager to make sure that I'm on top of my business. Being an accounting firm in this day and age is about making sure you can juggle as many different things as possible, spin as many different plates, wear as many different hats as possible. And it's only with thanks to software like this from Client Engager gives me the confidence to know that I'm going to be okay in terms of delivering that work. So without further ado, let's run that VT. Let's pretend that I'm about to go through a day in the life and say thank you to Client Engager for making sure that I'm on top of everything I need to be. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo. That QuickBooks chap on the internet, head of accounts here at Boffix, and also your friendly podcaster who goes live each and every Monday morning with Assy Accountant. Now, Client Engager has become a fundamental part of how we run our business. So I thought to go for a bit of a day in the life of, a bit of an understanding of exactly what we do, how we do it, and why we are so efficient now, thanks to Client Engager. It all starts in the morning, so let's see what we first do when we first get in and log in to our day. So first of all, we're always giving our core values. Now, this is a demo company, so I'm not 100% saying that this is true, but yeah, it'd be nice if this was uh, was, was right. So um, as soon as we go in, we can see our core values. For the Boffix one, we have a much more. We have six core values here that really just emphasizes what our core values are, and we love seeing that as soon as we log in. The next thing though is I'd always encourage our team members to utilize this top area up here to start making sure we're logging our time. So the first thing I would be doing is logging my time ready for today. There's loads of options. I've done a whole video on how to log time, but I can go in here and just log a brand new time, keep it on top of it. So I know straight away that I need to get Client Engager open because that's where I'm going to be logging my time throughout the day. It's also really good because then I get some mentions at the top here. Either user mentions, i.e. one of my team members is trying to throw something at me. Maybe they want me to review something, get an opinion on something, something like that. I will get told from that directly from here. And the big one is the notifications. That's when something's happened client side. Maybe a client submitted a set of it or signed a set of accounts. Maybe a client's put in a request to um, have some new services. Whatever it's going to be, it's all going to be under this notifications. If they signed your client letter of engagement, you're going to get told that. You want to be able to keep on top of that. So we're always in this area anyway. We don't personally in our practice, but a lot of other people would live by their emails as well so that they have access to the emails, make sure they're on top of them. So typical day. First things first is we would run what we call either our daily or our whip, depending on what type of day it is. Now, both of these meetings are designed to get the whole team together, especially with being remote. Um, and then we go through if there's any deadlines that might be due today or throughout the rest of the week. So in our work in progress meeting, our whip meeting, we go through every single aspect we can just so we make sure that everything's going to be filed by this time next week that may be due. And our daily is about just going through and having that opportunity to catch up making sure that if there's anything that's problematic that we're on top of it when we can. So it gives us all that flexibility from here and we do a lot of it directly from here. Two areas we keep an eye on during our opportunity of our daily and our whip, so our team meetings. First one, the deadline areas is huge. We use the service groups quite a lot, so we would basically look and see what accountants um, have we got in our accountants one. You can see here I've got all these different companies five months to go for these ones but i've only got request records on there and they're in progress at the moment for this one but help's needed on that one straight away i can see exactly how it's going and how my business is doing and what we've got to look at in more detail this is because i prioritize these by deadline so the ones at the top will be the ones that have the um, uh, the deadlines to worry about but if we need to we can change this around by looking at my status or maybe i just need to go and look at by my due state as well that way i can see if anything's overdue or okay in this case i really do need to get on top of these two ones but these ones i've got more time to worry about until it's due or maybe i can say it's due more than two weeks or overdue i've got loads of options to be able to make this work for me but ultimately we run our whole business based on this view because this is the view that lets us know exactly what our status of our clients are and if there's anything we need to worry about we also spend a lot of our time in the notifications area now again, this notifications area is going to be very quiet because this is a not a live company, this is a demo account. 
But trust me, on our Buffix account, every single day we could have multiple notifications. Now, a little pro tip for this one. Under your settings area, and under the notifications area, under jobs, you'll notice you get to choose who gets notified every time that notification happens. So ones that are really important to us are things like their engagements, um, every time companies direct, company's house data changes, every time Zama needs maybe reviewing. Um, for us, we always keep an eye on anything that's submitted forms or if there's anything that's been signed or rejected. And they're really important to us because they're gonna involve an action from us to do to make sure we're on top of things. So what we tend to do, and especially in, in our main firm, what we would do is we would have a generic account created. We have a your account at boffix.com. We'd create that one, and that's the person that would have all notifications put to it. So whoever's running the daily, whoever's running the whip in the morning, when they're sharing the screen, they will log out of theirs, log into that one, so they can see a holistic view of everything that's going on in the firm. That way, we can make sure that no notification goes unnoticed. We can allocate them, we can put them to a different task, we can put them to different people. Basically, we go through and we don't leave that screen until each one of those notifications, someone's taken responsibility for it. And we found that was a much better way for us to just have that confidence that someone's not going to be forgotten about, someone's not going to sign something and then it's not getting submitted, things like that. So it's all about making sure we know where our business is and know to make sure we're not going to drop the ball going forward. So what else? Well, I love the fact that now there's a tax on demand section here as well. So Todd, any questions I might have, or if my clients have questions or my team have questions, we always use this ask on demand section, it takes us directly over to Todd. And then from there, we can ask questions as we go along. So we've now built directly in there a bit of AI to help us making sure that if there's a question that we need to answer, we can get it answered directly from there. That keeps me going throughout my day. Now, let's look at some typical use cases of where this becomes really powerful. The most important one for me is about making sure we impress potential new clients we go along. So the way it will typically happen is the client would have a meeting, right? So during that meeting, I would make sure that that meeting gets recorded using Teams. And then using Teams, I can use the co-pilot functionality that I've done a video about to be able to grab that team data and all of that information that we've just had with them, condense it all down, get some action points and everything else. So typically, if I have a new client, it'll work a little bit like this. Say I want to go and add the client in. Well, first of all, I would make sure it's a prospect. I would import from company's house and I'd put the information in. So let's say that I've just had a meeting with Apple Core Productions. I could search for it and then basically I'm looking for the right company in here. So I keep finding it. Once I've found it, it's going to start importing some relevant information for me. So let's press finish import. Then from here, because all I'm really doing at this point is want to generate their quote, generate their um, letter of engagement. So. I go in, I add the person. I can use this button here and it will import the person itself. I can either match it or if I can do it from there or I can go in and add an individual if I need to. Once I've done that, I press the next button. I create any related businesses I might be related to. For me, we don't spend too much time going through things like general information at this point. Because what we're gonna do is if they accept the quotation from us, accept and want us to work for them, then at that point, we will then go and request the extra information at that point. So what I would tend to do here is I would set what service they want and I can go through and say what their revenue is and any type of questions you want. You are in full control at this point as to what's going to be asked. I can say that it's really good and it's going to give me a suggested fee at the top here. I can say I'm happy with that fee or if I actually want to override it, I can override it and whatever I need to do. Don't worry about the fees I've got here. This again is all a sample company. I can then go and add what other services I might want here. I can go and add other services that might need to go through. Again, asking questions. And you can either spend so much time like we have in Boffix where you're asking loads of questions to really find out what that fee is going to be, or you can have a matrix somewhere else and just import the information as you go through. Basically though, once I've done this and I've added the ones in that I want to add in as I go along and I'm happy that everything's done, I can go in and I can say, yep, I'm happy with that. Let's look at my service details. 
Now it's going to be really clever because things like um, the CT600 limited company, it's going to take that directly from company's house already. It's going to know what that relates to. But anything it doesn't know, it's just about you putting in that information as you go along. Again, TSA1, that's going to be hard coded. That's going to be there, makes it easy. I can then go to my terms, make sure I'm happy with that, make sure I've got my summary up and I press save. Now, what I do for this point is two things. First of all, that meeting we had, well, let's capture that data. So I go over to my communication tab, log meeting or call, go and choose location. Again, I would normally have teams and stuff already set there. So set that ready, say who was in it, say who I spoke to, and then put a little subject in. For me, I'll just copy and paste the information. So I could have co-pilot telling me we did X, Y, Z, bring that information in. So I grab the, the information from the last meeting, put a subject in there, press save. I've got options to upload documents if I want to. But ultimately, that means that anyone who comes and finds this prospect and looks at this client will now know what my meeting was about, what action points we had, everything else. That's where AI is going to change the game in terms of getting that information there. And that's where Client Engager works so well with that, right? It gives you an area to put the information in so that anyone else who looks at this now has an insight into what was happening. Then the important thing is sending over their letters of engagement. With a one click, I can generate the letter of engagement, make sure I'm happy with it, go through the information that's there. And I can then press the send button and get it sent directly to the client. Now, from a client's point of view, it's relatively straightforward from them as well. As you can see here, I've got my proposal straight in front of me. My client, I can see my monthly and my annual fees. I can set that up how I want it to be set up. Um, and basically, if I'm happy with it, I press review and sign. That takes me directly to my letter of engagement. From here, I can see uh, preferences and I can approve it. Set my privacy notice. And then basically, I have access now. And don't forget, the client even gets an app as well. And from the app, they can go through everything we've just done, seeing all the information, seeing everything that goes through. And they can go through and be able to interact with you from there. But ultimately, from my point of view, what I care about Talk about in corner, I get notified that it's signed. I can see also here that I've been told that it's signed there. And I also have an opportunity when I need to, to go in and I can see if I'm under my communication tab all the information. So that was my first meeting, that was me sending proposal, and there was a proposal being accepted. What happens then in our world is we would then be, do a new form request and we would ask them to onboard themselves or onboard the company. So send that over to them, basically asking them to go and give us information. I then probably want the director to in, uh, go in and board, on board themselves as well. So directly from here, I can click into the director, go to form requests, hit new requests, go in here, add an individual and click save. What that's done is sort of no time at all and I can set all this to exactly what I wanna do, but I've just started the onboarding process. Now, as a client, I'm now being asked to go in and complete some, I've got my signed letters of engagement there. I've also got a client asking me to go in and do my onboarding form for a limited company. As soon as I proceed to the form and put my information in and go through from there, they're gonna ask me information like, what's my UTR number? What's my company number? And everything else that goes with it. So basically, the onus is now on me as a client to provide that information. And best yet, as soon as I've applied that information in here, I'll then have the option to review the answers once it's completed. And then I'll have the opportunity just to put those answers directly into my client engaged database, keeping everything nice and clean. This is the point where client engagement becomes so powerful for me because I'm working with clients. I'm working with them. I'm making it easy for them to onboard. And with little features like this, this makes client engagement an integral part of me wanting to make sure that I'm running my practice as best as I possibly can. What else do I do with Client Engager? Well, Client Engager is the perfect place for me to have a holistic view on how my business is doing. From the dashboard, I can see if there's any work or accounting services I need to keep an eye on. I can see if my debtors are overdue and if there's anything I need to do with my debtors. Remember that I have the opportunity to connect this directly to QuickBooks. And what I also use this to do is make sure I'm on top of my billing. So because I'm asking my team to go through and do their timers and put it from there, one of the questions I ask them is, well, is this a billable expense or not billable? Do I need to be raising additional invoice for this or is this already in scope? And I know what's in scope and what's not in scope because I can go to any client that I want to in the whole of my 
client area and I can see exactly what services they have with me and which services they don't and what they're paying for. And if there's anything outside of this that I need to then raise the invoice for, I'm gonna do it directly from here. I go to my invoice area and if I need to, I would use the raise invoice functionality to raise the invoice, get it straight over there, get it connected and I'm off to the races from there. That way, I know that if I need to raise invoices based on work that's out of scope, based on additional scope creep, whatever it's gonna be, I've got my opportunity to be able to raise it directly from here and not miss out on it, which is the important thing. And there we have it. There's a day in the life of how I use Client Engager to run my business. You can see that at each step, it's been thought about quite cleverly in terms of how an accountant would interact, how they would interact with their client, and what's gonna go from there. Now there's much more coming from Client Engager. We were lucky enough to see their roadmap, see what's in there. So we know that there's some features coming through. It's even gonna change stuff we've just talked about. And there's even more features we haven't talked about in a day in the life of. So if you want more information on Client Engager, make sure you use the comment section below. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, because I'm sure at some point we're gonna go back into the world of Client Engager with one of their many other updates that they're gonna to bring to the table. My name's been Aaron Patrick. As always, this video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.